Well, this is a a surprise, Robin van Rensburg, sitting in a very, very different car to what I'm used to driving with you in. Yeah. New job, exciting position. Yeah. Welcome to our CEO feature. How things? Yeah, good. Thanks, Morris. Yeah, nice to see you again. Whew, hitting yeah. the ground running in 2017. That's really, yeah. Give us the title officially. Yeah, so uh, the title is, well, it's quite an interesting um, setup because we're still two companies. Uh, um, we're still Fiat South Africa yeah. and we're Chrysler South Africa, which is actually First challenge, challenge number one is kind of merging the two organizations and kind of you know getting us known to Fiat Chrysler yeah. Automotive. So I've got two titles. I'm CEO of uh, Chrysler South Africa <laughs> and I'm managing director of Fiat South Africa. So yeah, it's uh, it's, I think it's cool. You uh, wake up, choose what moves you in, and that's kind of what you what you run with. Uh, Robin, background, were you, where did you grow up? I'm assuming like all South African guys, cars were your, were your thing. So, so where did it start for you? So yeah, I'm, I'm a Joburg boy. So, and I'm hardened to, to the life in uh, Joburg, but you know yeah. what, I love Joburg because it's, you know, this is where it all happens, is the engine room um, uh, of the country. So yeah, born, born in Joburg, went to school, actually locally as well. So I was at um, Foy's High School. Okay. Um, before that, Brindale, um, so in the kind of area, and um, so you've never left. Never left. Never left. It's quite of, rare, you know, to yeah. find a guy in your position in the industry that's kind of stuck around, has remained yeah. Joburg based, hasn't been moved from pillar to post. Yeah, it's it's interesting because you know clearly, you know, when we talked about you know being a different brand, is going, yeah. you know, one of the clear you know um, paths there for me was was to travel um, internationally. And, yeah. You know, one of the real challenges and, and important with me is I'm a family man first before I'm anything else. And you know, my That's daughter's good. now 11 years old. You know, I have a son of seven, and it's not it's a, it's a tricky time. You know, so just before high school, you know, just before as a teenager. Is, is, it, is, is, it, is this the point that I wear this hat? I, mean, I, was, I was wondering. I was just about to say you have the same cap as my son. We are driving in Robin's personal car. I don't want to look around. I don't, I don't know what else I'm going to find. But, <laughs> no, no. but no, it's only kitty stuff. <laughs> <laughs> family man you are that's yeah, cool yeah. so it's obviously important for you to remain remain no, here and keep know, them grounded 100 yeah. percent. And, and you know I have, a, I have a great wife that's, that's at home with my kids and i'm very you know i'm very blessed to be able to have that privilege that she can be at home to, to raise the kids and um you know so erin's almost a, a teenager yeah. uh, two years to go so to up and kind of leave even though those opportunities are immense yeah. um, uh, is quite difficult and so um, you know, it was also part of the reason, um, you know, that I decided to take the challenge locally because, you know, there are not too many CEO jobs available no. from, from an OEM point of view. And, and also your age. 100%. 100%. You know, it's a, it's a real achievement. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. And, then, and actually, you know, from an FCA point of view, um, it demonstrates its commitment to the country. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think there's many even local OEMs or local producers, should I say, or importers that have put a local in charge um, in charge but robin isn't that also i mean understanding that our environment is pretty unique i mean the motor industry we're in yeah. for a tough year so, uh, no, what no. works in europe doesn't always work here yeah. we do like we're very eurocentric in what we want but you are still dealing on an African level on certain things. So it, it makes sense sure. having somebody that actually appreciates the market. 100%. What what was what was the first car you ever owned? Can you remember? <laughs> I do remember it very well. <laughs> of course. It was actually, it was a Renault 5, yeah. another one with yeah. the red little, and it had a steering wheel, um, almost like that as you drove. And I, I think I replaced the clutch cable more than, <laughs> in fact, I learned how to change gears, you know, without a clutch. Without a clutch. <laughs> Yeah, well, so you're yeah, getting the synchro mesh lined up and then yanking it into your gear. But uh, but how uh, cool! I mean, those, those those little memories. I mean, you 100%. said that, that that was the the ultimate car because yeah. that was your sense of freedom. 100%. You know, and, and why motoring? I mean, when you went, what did you study at Varsity? Was it always your focus to get into the industry, or how did you end up being involved in motoring per se? I, I suppose I'm actually lucky. If I'm being really really honest, um, you know, I studied marketing. Um, Varsity, but I've always had a passion for motorsport. Yeah. You know, so, you know, I remember, you know, before Formula One was televised live as it was today, I remember waking up, you know, either get way too late at night, you know, much to my parents' uh, disgust, yeah. watching Formula One Grand Prix. I was a massive Nigel Mansell fan, so, you know, one of the clearest memories for me was watching a Canadian Grand Prix. It must have been 12 o'clock at night. I think there was the one race where he accidentally switched the car off when he was like almost a lap, 
and let the head, head yeah, yeah. let the head smacking the steering wheel. So I have massive kind of memories of yeah. watching motorsport. I loved local motorsport. So we actually lived um, in Berlin, which is yeah, we close were, to Kalami. Yeah, yeah. And, and we were one of the first properties. Um, uh, my parents bought the property there. I mean, if I tell you the price they paid, I think they oh, paid yeah. something like forty thousand rand for the stand. Much yeah. like what Toby paid now. Yeah, yeah pretty, pretty close. Much, yeah. yeah, pretty much. And <laughs> you know, so. It was an easy walk across, and I actually remember um, walking across from Baliu to Kailami when they had the old Kailami, we had the long straight to yeah. the back, and standing at the top there and watching the very last Grand Prix there. Um, it's your memories, eh? Yeah. We, we miss those days. Oh, 100%. And also when, when it kind of come back and they were doing testing, um, and, um, you know, watching, uh, uh, you know, the very further, uh, in fact, the only race I think I had where, um, if I remember correctly, Damon Hill, Kind of spun out and the first lap, I can't remember yeah. directly, but it was um, a Grand Prix. So, you know, very fond memories of that, and also fond memories of you know watching motorsport yeah. at Carlo. You know, Tony Viana in the in the, the kind of the BMWs. Oh, and and the, the, those were there. I mean, I grew up. My cousin was Mike Brick, so we grew, oh, okay. we, we grew oh, up. Awesome. Yeah, we grew up in that same thing. Oh. So, it's, it seems a very much a South African thing. Maybe the next generation growing up now won't have that same passion that, that you speak of. So, to be able to take your degree and link it into motoring, where did you? What was the first job you had in the industry? So yeah, I started with a company called Autoplus that owned the Speedy Mist Exhaust yeah. brands um, at the time. And it, again, it was one of those weird things that happened where um, I worked for Stu Kinnick, was my first job that was actually arranged through a friend of my dad's. And um, he went Check, on... Checking yeah, ticket yeah, stubs. No, that's, <laughs> that's exactly yeah. it. I mean, I started as that. Yeah. I cleaned cinemas, I cleaned our toilet. <laughs> Are you gonna make your daughter get a job? I have to, I have to. You know, it teaches you so much, eh? You know, you know what the real challenge for us in the industry is, is with children is because of the cars we drive all the time. The latest, the greatest, yeah. it's expected. And I, like my son's already said, Dad, my first car is going to be an F type. Yeah. I said, Son, over my dad. No, 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 not not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not going to happen. You know, my, my daughter's lowered her expectations now. She's going, oh, I quite like that new little Renault Clio, etc., yeah. etc. Cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. you know, we set, we set the bar pretty high for our kids in terms of what their. Uh, uh, what to expect, but um, yeah, so from so from Stack Inicor, you then went to went, yeah. and, and it was really just to kind of help them on some real promotional stuff because at that stage they were trying to change their image from the guy that came up to you with his hands full of grease, you know, into yeah. actually a proper like a Tiger Wheel and Tire type of course. Well, the brands you see today yeah. where you, you, you're met by you know, uh, more service oriented, yeah, yeah, more yeah. service. Yeah. So, this was kind of the beginning of the change in the, in the exhaust fitment yeah. type industry and. and um, they wanted me to be a part of that, so that's kind of how I learnt. And so, you know, got under the cars, did some wheel alignments, you know, you know, helped with odd, you know welding the odd exhaust, which I wasn't good at. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, you, but, but you also start understanding all elements of of the business. I mean, even even in your previous position, sure. I mean, you've been in the motor industry for 20 odd years yeah. you've worked in lots of different segments yeah. so you start understanding you, you see the whole picture of the industry well that was exactly it yeah. and so uh, again it was ironic how I got into my next job which was with mobile you know so mobile had just come back into the country you know there's everybody knows a story about how they left the engine and took them over and um, they'd actually approached the speedy group to try and do oil changes yeah. um, which is a very European thing, and, and in fact, in Egypt, it's massive. And they thought, well, why don't South Africa do, do, do the same thing? Do the same. And they try to get it started in South Africa, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that's how they got onto me. It was kind of going, hey, we kind of like yeah. this guy. That's a bit more service orientated. Yeah. And then I joined the sales environment um, from there onwards, and I started selling oil. Um, Amazing, eh? And um, so I started a little bit kind of in the, in the kind of spares um, segment, but then got into OEMs in terms of uh, you know key accounts. Um, and so my first big key account was um, uh, Mercedes Benz, yeah. you know, because of the, the, the international type with Mercedes Benz, and so I you know, went on kind of a campaign, uh, you know, getting mobile into all the Mercedes Benz, and then um, you know, I worked in a couple of very successful you know, oh, projects. You, you, you're meeting all the right people, all the big players. One hundred percent. So you know, we um, set up. It was a, a concept we copied that was used in Europe um, locally. So Volvo trucks. You know, we brought to Volvo trucks the whole Volvo genuine oil concept. Okay. Which was used in Europe, and we got that launched that so I got involved in with that. So, had many great successes um, uh, in, in the oil, oil industry. In fact, that's where I met my wife, which is probably uh, one of my 
my, my biggest I, success. Well, I, you know, <laughs> I, I didn't want to put it out there, yeah. but I'm glad I'm glad you closed the whole <laughs> sentence with your biggest achievement yeah. to, to date to, in your previous work with Jaguar Land Rover. It's yeah. also multi-brand. Yeah. It's also a brand that wasn't doing particularly well a few years ago, but there was a massive change. Yeah. Product-driven logistics service orientation. Yeah. Is this the same challenge you think that face? Fiat, Chrysler, Alpha, the, the whole group. Even before JLR, I was at um, BMW. Yeah. You know, trying to manage multiple brands. You know, even if you take a brand like BMW and Mini, they're yeah. two strong brands. It is so complex because each brand has got its own intricacies and its own personality. Own personality, but also for, at a dealer level, you know, it's in, ensuring sustainability from a dealer level. So you've got to you know, express the brand um, as you want it and still make sure that, you know, from a dealer perspective, because that's our our outlet to customers yeah. that it's a good business for them that's sustainable in the long term for you guys now you know product is is key five new models coming to yeah. to market which is which is which is critical because that's yeah. what, what gets people excited um is it a case though like where you look at the success of of jeep in a way yeah. is that what's been carrying the whole group it has it has uh, now so you know i mean we don't have to kind of beat around the bush on that yeah. is that um Jeep is still a strong um, South African brand and we need to continue to build um, on that and you know we, we will build on that with product because we launched the new campus which yeah. is later in the year and I think it's going to be quite exciting a nice little segment that's growing um, it's in massively South popular in South Africa and they were groundbreaking by bringing out by departing from this whole four-wheel drive thing oh, by going two-wheel drive that's and now that's what most of the people are doing because that's what the market de exactly. demands yeah. you know? and if you think about it Cherokee was the first kind of commercial SUV yeah. you know made SUVs um, acceptable yeah. you know, in, the, in the marketplace. So we've been groundbreaking in many areas. But for me, probably the most exciting part is Sad. Alpha. Sad. It's well, one of the great brands. Yeah. yeah. And let's be honest. I mean, and, and you've got you've got a product at the moment. Yeah. The Julia. So yeah, yeah. I was hoping we'd be driving that. <laughs> not, not that I've got something against the Grand Cherokee, it's an awesome car, but I was hoping we'd be yeah. driving the Julia. Um, have you driven it? I have driven it. It and is magnificent. It is rear wheel drive, driver focus, everything that Alpha was known for. I mean. I mean, from the minute you switch the car on, the sound, you, you just have to look at the international press and yeah. go, you know, Alpha's back. Yeah. And I think the world needs Alpha. <laughs> every every petrol head, if you consider how we've grown up, every petrol head at some point in his life has owned an Alpha. Yeah, GTV V6 is course. racing, I mean, that's the soundtrack on that. Eh? Oh, I, I want to end on a, on a good note. Yeah. I mean, because you're speaking about Alpha and Julia. Yeah. All of them that have come to to market to date, yeah. at the top spec R's have. Yeah, so it's a QV, it's a limited edition, yeah. so um, 50 of them all sold. And, yeah. and that's actually, and again, it just demonstrates what we have. Not a word of advertising. No. Um, just speaking to a couple of enthusiasts saying, we've got this one of 50, come and get it. It's, uh, that's a great story to tell. Um, but even more exciting than, I, than that is the Stelvia, um, which we're probably looking to launch um, later in the market in the year. So, uh, Alpha, like all other brands, ventures into the you know, SUV, SUV markets. Yeah. You know, so you've seen the images. The car is beautiful. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. So Stelvio, being a very famous uh, mountain pass in, 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 in Switzerland, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a magnificent place, um, and it's going to be a magnificent car. I actually, saw it in Italy when you uh, were there. Now, yeah, in last week. So yeah, very excited to bring that to the uh, South African market. And, and listen, let's not forget Fiat. You know, no. Fiat. It's also it's got great heritage in South Africa, um, and, and probably one of the biggest jobs we're going to do in the next year is making sure that we rebuild Fiat as one of the established brands in South Africa. Welcome to an exciting new chapter. We're Thank going to be you. seeing a lot more of you. But thanks for your time on, uh, on Ignition GT. It's great. Yeah, thanks, Morris. Nice cool. to see you again.